One way to make your furniture and furnishings stand out is to add that special pop of color or interest as you finish it up. A great way to do that is to add a surprise transfer image, edge of a drawer, the bottom of a drawer, or the back of a cabinet in your furniture. And I'm going to show you how to do today. Hi, I'm Linda from Remade with Love, and we're going to talk about how you can transform your furniture using image transfers. To start off, I'll show you how I use plain, simple paper copies and transfer them on to make my furniture stand out. You'll need to have your furniture piece painted. So I just go ahead and usually use a light colored paint. Um, light to medium works best because we want that image to stand out. You'll need your painted piece, a foam brush, the liquid transfer. In this case, I use Amy Howard's at home uh, copycat. And you'll need to find what's best for your piece. Now, this is where you can get really creative. You look at the time period of the piece, you look at the colors that you use, and you come up with what would make it unique. I love going online and finding free images that I can use. If I'm going to transfer them and they have words, you have to reverse the print because the process that we'll use will actually call for you to put it face down and pull off the image from the back. And so if you don't transfer the image before you print, it's going to be all wrong. But if you have a floral like this one has in the middle, or I love finding the old um, vegetable packets or fruit packets as if they were seeds. They're reprinted online. There's so many of them that are great. Um, or the patterns. A lot of times I'll take um, just a simple pattern that the colors are complementary to my, my piece on that I'm finishing, and I'll use that. And in this case, I am going to use this one. This is the one that I've used on my finished piece. It's just a geometrical design. I loved the colors. They were light, and yet they would add something extra to it. You go ahead and cut out the image in the area that you're going to create. In this case, because it's such a small piece, And I'm just demonstrating, I'll just tear it out. You can also tear it out for that added texture if you see the tear. That could be creative. Make sure the image is to the size you need on the piece that you're putting it on. So if I were to measure this, here. Super simple to do. This will just take you in time. Just a few minutes to do. Of course, you're going to have to wait for things to dry. So that, that becomes the hard part. So I've got the image I'm going to transfer. I want to put this on my wood. Um, in this case, what I'll do is I will add some coffee cat to the jar about how much I think I'm going to use. I'm going to eyeball it here. I may have to add more. What's important to note is when this dries, it will dry a little bit uh, shiny. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. And so you want to make sure that that's okay and it goes with the piece that you're creating. If it's not okay, what you'll need to do is come back in with a wax or a sealer that's more of a matte finish if you prefer that. In this case, I don't mind. I'm going to seal it with maybe a ceruzing wax or something else. So I don't care if I overlap or the shine gets a little bit uh, on the outside of my transfer image. I'm going to go ahead and eyeball it up here. How far do I have to go? And it's important to put it not only on the piece that you'll be transferring, but a nice smooth layer of it actually on the wood. So I'm going to come back and make sure I saturate the paper. Every little bit of color that I want on my wood needs to be covered with this copycat transfer lotion. So once I get a nice coat of that on, 
gonna make sure I line it up exactly where I want that to go and press it down. Now, if you have a roller, it's sometimes good to use that to make sure all the air bubbles are out because once this is down, it's gonna stay down. It's good to do um, at least a two to four hour wait. I like to wait actually overnight because I want my transfer to be nice and clean and clear and not have any problems with any of the image pulling off while I'm taking off the paper. My next step, you can see how easy this is. It's gonna be removing it. So on this side, I've done this um, actually more than a day ago. I've just put this down, so I've gotta let that wait for 24 hours, two to four, or in my case, 24. And now I'll take this off. I like to use old washcloths that are now rags, and I designate them for my work with furniture. So just saturate your washcloth. You want to make sure that the transfer area, the back of the paper is saturated. You can see some of the image now starting to come through as the paper backing gets wet. And then just keep coming through. Now, as you go, you're going to rub in circular motions and the backing of the paper will come off like magic leaving a wonderful transfer on your wood. And you can see just how this is where the, the backing is still on and you can start to see that transfer image come through nice and clear. If you have that darker paper, like I said, it, it will be a little more difficult to see the image and sometimes impossible if you get very dark. So. This is good for those. Inside the drawer or inside on the edge of a casing where it would look great. And then just wipe it off and throw that out. What do you think? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay. To seal it, and it's still wet here, so I'm not gonna seal it right now, but what I would do is, like I said, I, if um, I wanted to make it just a little bit grayer, a little bit more aged, if I have an aged piece, and you'll see it on the piece that I'm finishing downstairs, I'll use ceruzing wax. So once this is dry, I'll take a little bit of ceruzing wax directly onto my rag, my dry rag. I'll rub in small circular motions, um, cover it up with wax, wait about 10 or 15 minutes. Now come back and lightly rub and buff that off. If I wanted to go ahead and use a regular clear or light wax, I'll come in with that and do the exact same thing. Wait till it's dry, bring my rag in, put a little bit of wax on it, light wax or clear wax and seal it by rubbing it in, let it sit and then come back and buff. I could also take a matte sealer, and this again, it, it will dry to more of a matte with just a, a little bit of a satin finish. It's not dead matte, dead flat matte like a matte like a chalk paint would be, but it's going to give a nice satin finish. So if you're okay with that on your your piece, go ahead and use that. Now, you know the the secret to the transfer image. It's so much fun doing transfer, and especially when you think about all the different ways that you can do transfer images. Um, I'm going to do another video soon and show you how I put transfer images on glass. So this is one of those box door candles, three wood candles that um, I have so many of because I love burning candles. Um, but I've got these glass containers and I don't know what to do with them. So I figured what I would do was um, for the clear ones, I often will paint them with my one-step paint, and then I'll go ahead and put a transfer image on there. So be sure to tune in, watch my next video, and I'll show you how to put transfers on glass.